Hey guys, today I'm going to change things up a little bit and ask that you guys are all interactive with what I show you today. So, at the end of this video, after I post it, I'm going to go put the link inside facebook.com forward slash wake up reading. That's the place that I put all of the information that I collect for our YouTube, I put that stuff plus anything that I couldn't make a, a video out of but still needed to be documented, like the Ponzi schemes that have already, there's already been at least two or three Ponzi schemes that were busted at Bethel, that one guy even used a submarine to try and get away from the police inside Lake Shasta, like... This stuff is hilarious what these guys are doing. <laughs> okay, uh, let me get back to this. So, I'm going to ask that you guys go to the Facebook page and help me with what I'm going to show you. So, we're going to be looking... Well, uh, you guys, I need you guys to be detectives. I need you to go out to look at all of your NAR leaders, any of their materials. Anything that is something that they've produced that their staff has made or that their people has made. It can be thumbnails for events. It can be thumbnails for videos. It can be front covers for books. It can be the logo for the church itself. We're going to look for chevrons and this is why. So I'll just let this run for a second. Okay, we already know that Furtick and all these guys are Masons. Let's skip through this stuff. The figure remains Skip that. We are looking for the part that starts getting to the meaning of Chevron. Uh, and uh, let's see. Of the Egyptian mummy. Uh, to write his books and become famous. Now, Dick Cheney. People laugh, people are cheering, but they have no idea why he says that, of course. Orange being the only color in your object, that is 33. The Masonic number, of course, the highest degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Chevron, 33. Okay, so in Gematria, that which we can tell that these guys are using, you go and you use the same tools that they're using. Like when uh, Sean Foyt's doing his whole 222 thing, those are angel numbers. Those come directly out of the New Age and Freemasonry. Um, Sean Foyt's first job out of college was he was one of the owners of three musketeers real estate so we already know that he's inside the real estate market and he's saying that he's a templar by being one of the three musketeers um these guys all use those codes uh, all the way up and down the line it, even um there is a a gaming shop in town that the guy that hosts all of bethel's gaming nights is over off of um, the Chelly, down across the street from one of the truck camper topper places, and his logo for his shop is an IXXI, which is another Templar logo, and the guy is the one that's hosting all of the events for what Bethel's doing for the gaming nights, and the stuff that he has in there is Dungeons and Dragons, and um, a, a thing, a game that is inside his um, pictures. He has all of his games set up, but there's one that's called As Above, So Below, and it just so happens to be flipped upside down. These guys are complete occultists. They're doing, they're practicing hermetic magic. If Bill tells you let's think positive and all this stuff, he's using hermetic magic. He's using the actual magic that Lucifer is teaching to the top echelons inside the Rothschild's private coven. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. That's what these guys are practicing. 
There is no separation. So we're going to identify the group by finding the chevrons. We can do that everywhere. Hold on a second. Uh, see the triangles going down? The chevrons inside this Wiccan shirt? That's the lady that performed the Lord of the Rings fiasco at Bethel. The one that everybody's always up at arms about. You just have to go and look at what these people are into. Check out every one of the shirts that um, this sucker's been wearing. And they all have those little Masonic phoenixes. It's really interesting. Let's see, which what, what do I have where? There's another Masonic Phoenix. There's another Masonic Phoenix. He, these guys are cultists. This is seriously how easy it is to be able to tell. Baphomet, Space Force. Baphomet, Space Force. Guess what? Reading Sundial Bridge is Baphomet worship. And Sean Foyt started his let us worship inside the actual symbolic belly of the beast. That's where Sean Foyt started his tour. Underneath a Templar design, Santiago Calatrava uses a Templar, the guy that designed Sundial Bridge. They are Baphomet worshippers. That bridge is a penis, a vagina, ejaculation, and the seed, and a womb. If you go and look at the symbology of the stuff, these people are occultists. You see that Chris Tomlin never lose sight? One eye symbology? That was produced by Bethel's mega producer, Jeremy Edwardson. I've known Jeremy since he and I were, he was recording a album called Whistletoe. Now, if you understand what symbology means in the 1990s, if you had a whistling toe, as a girl, that was not a good thing. And so that was the name of his um, his first album that was recorded at Merle Haggard's studio where I met him, where three of the guys from the group Enterprise Starship at Enterprise High School that I was in Starship with these guys, they were inside the band. And my friend Ryan, that was the bass player for a bunch of other bands, ended up taking me over there and that's where I met these guys. Jeremy Edwardson won a Dove Award for this album for um, Worship Album of the Year. Let me show you something real quick. I didn't have this planned, but I'm going to add this part in. This is Jeremy's band. This is Jeremy's band winning the MTV which is Masonic Television. They're filmed inside a Mason Lodge. The MTV um, Mountain Dew Challenge. This is his band winning that. Jeremy's the lead singer, by the way. So the result of the result of Jeremy's band winning that was that they got a distribution deal with Koch, and Koch Records got them this video, which Koch means it is a type of distribution deal that you end up owning the rights to your own material. Um, you would make something like between sixty and a dollar fifty if you were selling one of your albums on a regular record label, but because you're on Koch and you're bringing in your own um, money pretty much for your making videos and whatnot, Jeremy would have had pretty much complete control over what was produced inside this video. Just saying. So inside this video, because I already understand that these guys are occultists, the idea of arrows in symbology is akin to magic. So arrows in flight means that this guy is performing magic and that he's expecting a result from what he's practicing. The whole video
video is not important. So we're going to fast forward to, let's go to here. This is symbolic. Half man, half beast. He's making a Baphomet worship. So inside this video, these little people that live inside the trees are scared of this animal that looks all big and bad, but really, he's married to a woman. So I gotta stop the video at least for a minute, because if I play too much of it, then I get a copyright strike. So, this is the horned beast, half man, half beast, married to a woman who's now having offspring that are half man, half beast. This is the fallen angels coming down, mating with the women, and creating the Nephilim. This is the result of that as far as the occult is concerned. So this guy, it, look at this. This is 196,000 views. Yes, it's 14 years. But this song also, uh, I don't know if it was this song. One of their songs made it onto Guitar Hero. So there's lots of stuff. Like, you don't get in. I worked 14 years in the music industry as a music manager, and my guys were big in the 80s and 90s before I started managing them. Pretty much all I did was call casinos and that kind of stuff and try and get them local gigs and get them featured in writers' nights and that kind of stuff. I mean, they, they were big enough names, but if you got $1,000 for getting one of my guys to go perform at a car show, you were doing good. I, I mean, Charlie had 12.5 million sales before me. Uh, Parlay had six and a half appeared on six and a half million albums with DMX and the Rough Riders, and Mikey is the godfather of Christian music. Like he he is the he won the first two Dove Awards for Hip Hop Album of the Year, and I managed him for years. And none of this stuff I didn't recognize that any of the stuff that was around me was a cult. But now that I'm outside of it and I can see it through the eyes of what the occultists actually practice i'm being wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove you guys are are going to be able to find the occultism by just practicing this stuff so this jeremy edwardson that did all the, this is nuts these templars that are stealing our town this it, the bible says okay the bible says that he who has wisdom knows that the seven heads of the beast of Revelation are seven hills or seven mountains. All you have to do is go and look at the seven mountain mandate and you will see that that's what they're practicing. They are friends with the Pope. The seven mountains of Rome are the copy of the seven mountains that are in Jerusalem. They are trying, the new apostolic reformation is trying to reestablish seven mountains and they're going to try and steal our town using Ponzi schemes, hiding behind Templar theology. They are tricking the kids to coming into town. They are practicing every form of abomination that is listed in Scripture. Everything that the Scripture says, don't practice this, it's, abo it's an abomination. The Templars inside this cult are teaching you to do it. Um, from 
uh, 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 I have Jamatria stuck on my head. That's not what I'm trying to think of. Okay, so grave soaking is Kabbalah. The foundation of all of Freemason teachings, according to Manly P. Hall and according to Albert Pike and all the other top Freemasons, the, the very foundation of, of what they are doing is the Kabbalah. And according to scripture, the Kabbalah is the things that the devils actually taught mankind. That would have happened through... Here, here's where everybody's getting mixed up. Okay, we have Babylonia coming through Christianity, modern Christianity, through the Catholic line. And we have Babylonia coming through the time that the Jews were in captivity in Babylon. And those two lines, there's nothing good inside the Catholic line. They've, at Constantine, when he started mixing the two religions together, there's nothing good. Babylonian or Catholic, that's not Christianity. Nothing down that line is Christianity. The Sunday worship, um, Calvary Chapel, none of that stuff. That's all dispensational theology, all came through the Templars, the Jesuits, all of that stuff. Then on the other side we have the Jews. The Babylonian Jews are the ones that are practicing the Kabbalah right now. The ones that are using the Jewish star, the as above, so below symbolism of King Solomon. Those guys right now, the ones that added a thousand rituals that have to be um, performed on the Sabbath, those guys are still doing Babylonian worship. Then there's the guys that actually believe in Yeshua HaMashiach as the Messiah and nothing else. You don't have to add anything to the Bible. You just have to believe what the Bible says in context because you have to remember those little numbers that separate each verse, these were written as letters. If you read them out of context, you can make those words say anything you want to. It's a magical ritual to be able to take one verse from one scripture, one verse from another scripture that, that don't relate. Like if they overlap each other and they are referencing each other, that's one thing. But these new pastors go and take any seven verses out of the Bible that they want, and then they tell a story around those seven verses and make the verses say whatever they want. It's not According to scripture, we are to be reading Moses and the prophets out loud on, on, on the Sabbath. Sabbath is from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. We are not to make anybody work. We're not to cook. That's pretty hard. It's such a weight. I don't know. Or there's a thousand laws that the Jews try, the, the, the Kabbalic Jews try and add on top of you and tell you you have to do. Okay, so we're getting out of that. Let's get back to what I was going to ask you guys to do. Sorry, guys, I had to do another little bunny trail. This is inside my photos. This is after Bieber supposedly become a Christian, throwing up Masonic hand signs, and that Aces logo. Let's check out the Ace of Spades real quick that was just on Bieber's shirt. So highlights from today's Revealing Truth video. As T.D. Jakes is passing on his mantle, we see this interesting tattoo of an Ace of Spades on his daughter's spine. Why is that important to understand? In Freemasonry, that Ace of Spades means mor mortality. Let's look at these. First, we'll look at the Ace of Spade on the back of her neck. Sponsored by Coca-Cola. Can't really get further over. But it's on her spine. Notice that? The Ace of Spades is on her spine. You go in to Google. You put in Ace Spades because the ofs and the it and the A and those small little words don't help with the search results. You just put in your buzzwords and you get better results. So you can go over here and the spine is actually in Freemasonry 
part of this whole teachings of how to be able to control your mind. Like, there's... It's symbology of they're using fallen angel information to try and take advantage of people who don't know the Bible to be able to get them to follow these false people to hell. And they're getting paid by Lucifer to be able to do it. They all get their Mercedes and their Bentleys and everything to be able to make you guys, to make people follow them to hell. So, I didn't make a YouTube about this. I'm going to add this one in too. Kanye produced a song for my band, Parlay, back in 2005. So, I've never met the guy. I have connections to the guy. That's the close several connections. One of my friends made one, well, one of my buddies from high school youth group at Little Country Church produced a music video for Kanye. Not many people know that. So, in this post, we are looking at Kanye West and the Coco Chanel brooch. We have a Freemason's double-headed phoenix or eagle, the letter C in Gematria, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, CC would be 33. That uh, double-headed phoenix that has the CC in it, also, if you go and look on Google, they have that same phoenix with the number 33 inside. So we don't have to make any conclu we ha We're not jumping to conclusions saying that that CC means 33. It's already an established fact. The interlocking CC makes a vesica Pisces. This is a sigil, semiotics, symbolism for Lucifer, the female side of Satan. You have to remember that Satan disguised himself as a worker of light, one of the ascended masters of the great white brotherhood of light. He is known as Shekinah, his followers as workers of righteousness. The first degree of Freemasonry to the very, very top, of the fallen angels are the the great white brotherhood of light is the ascendant when you guys hear that we're having an alien invasion and that they've been um here the whole time guiding mankind they're talking about the fallen angels they're talking about the ascended masters you guys recognize that everything bethel is doing is new age well, this is the top of the new age. When I told you guys that I went to the Bethel um, garage sale, Bethelite garage sale, that video, and said, be scared that this is the thing that they're practicing, I found 11 audio recordings of the Ascended Master St. Germain inside the collection of stuff from this Bethelite. They're practicing Ascended Master doctrine. That's it. They're following Lucifer. So, because of me uh, having kind of the connection to Kanye, it means that when he talks, I usually pay attention. Well, before God pulled me out of all this chaos that is the world, and completely like I'm in the wilderness. I have nothing to do with what you guys are doing right now. If you guys are all scared about your COVID, sorry, I'm not anything to do with it. Even a year before you guys all got locked down, I didn't have anything to do with it. I think I left the house like six times. I've only been studying scripture and connecting the dots between what's going on here and what's going on. It, like, Bill Johnson murdered my best friend to be able to bring in his Templar militia and steal our town. The last, I, all the classes that I failed growing up in school were because I hate public speaking. But when I, it, the last time that I was public speaking I think was January 10th, I think, 1994, at Bethel Church while I was giving the eulogy for my best friend that Bill Johnson had just murdered. He gave Scott the car that, that Scott died in. Scott drove off of a bridge, and the guy in the back seat that lived said that the brakes didn't work. That's not what happened. I'm telling you right now, I was in that car the week before the accident that killed the boys. That, the, that car was designed. Designed. Somebody had taken the backside of that gas pedal, 
used a Dremel tool to be able to cut a sliver of metal off of the back of that gas pedal and make it so that it would always stick to the carpet. I looked under the gas pedal and saw that and told his parents and they didn't let us drive the car for the rest of Christmas break until he died on New Year's Eve. Bill Johnson gave him the car that was designed to kill him. These Templars and these Freemasons are not going to bring in a one-world uh, one world church that they're trying to build here now. That's what they're building. This new building is going to be taken over by the Catholics. Why do you think Chris Valentin is over there shaking hands and Lou Engel and all the other guys? They're all planning on being aligned with Beast Number 1, and they're already aligned with Beast Number 2. The, the, we know that the beast number one, we are under maritime law. That means that we are under the law of the sea. Who was the law of the sea? The Templars. All the skull and crossbones, all the pirate ships, those are all logos for the Masons. Masons. All of them, both sides, right side and left side, all Masons. So we are under maritime law, the law of the sea. The beast of the Catholic Church. When the yellow uh, fringe comes off of the flags, we will be switching to the Ascended Master St. Germain. That's going to end up being when everybody is worshipping the man of lawlessness. It's St. Germain's World Trust, established in 1729, that is financially backing the One World Government's new currency. The gold that's being pulled up on the curse of Oak Island right now is two million pounds. According to scripture, the mark of the beast is the number of a man. The number of a man is King Solomon. King Solomon is connected to 666. It has to be that the thing that's going on that's connected to the mark of the beast is connected to King Solomon, period. We know that the, the King Solomon collected gold, gold, curse of Oak Island, gold, Francis Bacon's New Atlantis, the financing for it, gold, King Solomon's ill-gotten gold from when he went bad was 666 talents per year for 40 years. That's 1,998,000 pounds of gold to be able to, um, to, that, that's the gold for the, for the coming mark of the beast. Once they finish crashing our economy, which is what they're doing right now, it's a slow kill. Once they're done, they have to give people a chance to be able to survive. They're letting people know right now that things are going to hit the fan and that you're going to need to be able to survive. If you're not going out and learning how to identify the trees that God already gave us to be able to provide us with food, then you're probably not going to know where to go once everything hits the fan because the grocery stores are going to be locked down and they'll probably put you into jail inside the grocery stores. There's a reason why Walmarts all have um, their video cameras in the exact same places that turrets, gun turrets would be placed um, inside a prison camp. Just an FYI. A and my buddy, his family built the Walmart in Anderson and there are tunnels underneath that Walmart that are big enough that you could put five semi trucks nose to tail that long underneath the Walmart and like five or six or whatever he told me this was years ago but he told me it was like several of them wide that's not a septic tank folks just an FYI okay so back to this Chevron square right same logo as Stephen Furtick same music, uh, oh, I was going to show you guys that. Let me, let me. Let's do this one for Brother John Elving. Lucie, history, family crest, chevron, 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 equaling six, six, six. There you go, bruh. I think Stephen Furtick might be in the, the cult of the dead. I mean, he's telling you he is, but are you going to believe him? 
I mean, because this is even his own designed shirt. Look underneath that skull. That's his logo. Uh, and the roses represent Lucifer. Go look it up. You guys think these um, light shows are harmless? That's the, the actual sigil of Lucifer. Go look up sigil of Lucifer and then tilt it sideways. Guess what? They're occultists. This is the Kabbalah tree. They're using it as a front cover for a book. Forward by Sid Roth. Go figure. I mean, as above, so below. This one, they've got their roots going into the sky, which means that they're going into the ethereal, into the second heaven to be able to get their information. They're not putting their roots into the ground which is the other kind of Kabbalah. So one side is going to the roots of the ground to get their esoteric information. One is going to the second heavens to get their information. And these people, Ken and J J J Jane, whatever her name is, these people are showing you that they're using Kabbalah. This isn't, go and research this, it's all, it, it's common knowledge inside these groups. Altar worship, that uh, Tau cross upside down is another, if you go and look at the Tau cross in Freemasonry, um, when Lucifer was writing as Shakespeare, he said, ever the fourth T. And when he said that, you can be able to go and um, take apart his front cover of his book that that was in, and be able to find some interesting Rosicrucian symbolism, but that fourth T is always upside down because he's the anti of what God is. He's not Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's not Yah, Yeshua, and the Ruach. He is anti that. And those three chevrons stacked up on top of each other are the number 666. So this is an altar to Lucifer. The pine tree also represents Lucifer. You can go and put in pine tree and Lucifer, and that's the reason why there were the twin pines inside the t in the movie um, Back to the Future. They're showing you. That's why um, Hillary Clinton's code name is Evergreen. That's why when the beginning of all this COVID stuff happened. Um, up in Seattle, Washington, there's a neighborhood called Evergreen, and that's where a whole lot of stuff started happening. You can be able to go and trace certain things. Oh, I didn't see this one. That seems to be a really big buzzword for these guys, gathering. Because one, so one of the pastors that I grew up under told me that God told him to start an event called The Gathering. And then it kind of came down onto my shoulders that maybe I was going to do it because I had all the friends in the music industry. And so I was going to start doing it. I've even got the Facebook page built for it still that I could bring up. But the gathering is a Freemasonic buzzword. These guys were feeding, even though I wasn't aware of it, they were feeding me buzzwords, Masonic buzzwords of agendas that they have planned, that they want to push their agenda of gathering you have to remember that it, the same way that Bethel has all those flags going up the sides of their driveway, that's symbolism saying that they're gathering the nations. They're gathering the nations together. That's what their school is, is rebellion. So those nations are the nations that were scattered by God because when those nations were together, they could accomplish anything, including stealing a town. The Oath of Nimrod. As above, so below, the Kabbalic practicing Jews, or the Kabbalic practicing Catholics that created all kinds of Sunday mess. Just kind of scrolling through my screenshots real quick. You guys know Paula White's husband, 
the one that everybody goes, oh, he's a great Christian. He performed with Brian Head Welch at the Better Man Conference. Better Man is a Freemasonic term. There's a video about that on the channel. These are the logos for her husband's band of Journey. These are, these are all the album covers. See how they get into the dung beetle, the Egyptian scarab? Masonic Encyclopedia. Venerated Beetle. You guys, they're Freemasons. They're practicing the religion of Babylon right in front of your eyes and getting you to participate in it. Even when you're wearing an Under Armour shirt or a Nike logo, those are Greek gods. Under Armour is as above, so below. Look at the logo. They're making that you think it's fantastic that somebody got so creative that they made their logo be able to be a mirror image. But that mirror image is intentionally designed as a cultism. And then their number one star, instead of Nike having Michael Jordan, Stephon Curry, who throws up his 666 hand sign all the time, and all he has to do is say, I'm a Christian, but his fruit says he's a Luciferian. Paying attention yet? I mean, at least Tom Brady and his wife admit that they're practicing witchcraft. That's because they're left-hand path Kabbalists. They are black magicians. White witches, black witches, there's lots of them around. Let's check out this one real quick of Reuben. While well, he's getting prayed over by Todd White, and he's wearing a Templar cross that says warrior. The, cr the crossed swords are Freemason. And what he writes down while Todd has his hand over Reuben's heart, well, up by Reuben's heart, obviously he can't have it there because of his glasses, but ordinarily he would have put it over his heart. Obedience plus discipline equal Todd White. What are all these logos on Todd White's shirt? How far into the logo do we have to look before we can see on his shoulder are all these little Templar crosses? All the Masons are showing you who they are. They're hidden in plain sight. So let's talk about this guy, Ruslan. We got these 666 right here with these chevrons. We've got him wearing the orange hat. The peace logo is occultism. The chevron's on his shoulders. He wants to be identified by his name. He's got the long hair because the Bible says not to. Uh, it looks like a Harley Davidson logo, which is also a scarab, the dung beetle, just in, di in disguise. And it looks like he's got a spider, which means that he's the one spinning the web of deceit. And then we've got his personal logo that's another, another chevron. And then we've got all kinds of other, if you go and look at his page, that it's all Masonic. But he's a Christian who's exposing all this stuff. So as soon as I saw that he was making a video about uh, Spencer Smith, I called Spencer, told Spencer. Spencer went over and watched the video. Then the next day... After I had explained all of these things to Spencer, the next day, this guy ends up saying in his videos, I'm going to get exposed. Of course you're going to get exposed. You're asking to be exposed. You're a Luciferian. You want the current systems to fall. You want the current church system to fall. You want the current government system to fall. And you want the current monetary system to fall. And you want to be rich until it all happens. And if you don't repent and turn back to the teachings of Yeshua HaMashiach, you're not going to end up being inside the bridal selection. It's Your fruit is the result of what kind of plant you are grafted into. You guys still think that I should trust Mike Winger? Mike does all the same stuff. He doesn't do the logos. 
but he has all the same type symbology. There's lots of people inside this movement that are calling themselves Christian truthers that are using all of the Masonic logos all of the time. Not just they randomly accidentally throw up one hand sign that might be confused. These guys have Masonic logos everywhere and you guys think that they're truthers. They're right-hand path Kabbalists. Go and look at Chris from, from Pirate Radio. Skull and Crossbones and the... Um, the uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to think of what that name is right now. The, the, the P with the X through it. Why am I... The Cairo. That's it. So, the... These are Masonic logos, and these guys are all hiding behind them. And their feet... They're doing chaos magic. They're practicing hermetic magic. They're telling you what the guys are doing bad, but they're not leading you to Yeshua the way that he says that he is in Scripture. They may be leading you to a Jesus that comes through Pentecostalism, or a Jesus that comes through the Presbyterians. But those are not the house of Israel and the house of Judah that Yeshua has the covenant with. Those guys are Babylonians. No matter how much washing you do of the garments of those people, they're still practicing Babylonian rituals. Period. Christian rapper Lecrae with his 666 logo on his shirt. What do you think those uh, grapes mean that are on the chin of that bear? I'm not going to say it out loud. You think maybe Lecrae's one-eyed symbolism is kind of obvious? I mean, just a little bit. More of Bethel's as above, so below. That H and the N are both ways to be able to do Kabbalah, and those two number threes, or, or those two sets of three lines, are numbers 33. And if you say that I'm wrong, they're even using Roman numerals at the bottom. They've just turned them sideways, and it's just quite interesting that this has to do with heaven come, where they are talking about God's will being done in heaven as it is on earth. Well, God's will was written down for us inside the Torah. If you don't follow and, and, and try and stick as best you can to what the, what the Torah is actually teaching us, Starts off in, uh, oh, geez, is it Deuteronomy? Just first five books of the Bible. Those are what we are supposed to know as Christians, as the foundation of our faith. That's it. The, the, the front of the book was the prophecy. The back of the, proof, the back of the book was the proof of the prophecy. The very back of the book is what's about to happen that's going to prove that the first two happened. Get ready. The fist in the air, Freemason hand sign of rebellion. Kirk Franklin doing the hand sign of the divine feminine. Here is Lucifer himself, the ascended master, Saint Germain, teaching women to do the divine feminine. But first the man of lawlessness must be revealed. There he is. So, I'm also one of the people who believes that the world is flat according to Scripture, because that's what the Scripture says. But there are going to be people, just like in Christianity, where these guys are fake Christians, these guys are going to end up coming in. Be careful who you follow and listen to, because there are fake people everywhere. This is a screenshot that Brother John grabbed um, and used in one of his videos. That um, sign for women is a sign for Lucifer. Go look it up. This guy, Derek Gate, this guy, Derek Gates, right here. This is another screenshot Brother John got. Um, go look at all of his. See, the, the ring on his right hand is a skull. He's supposed to be a Christian. 
This, this is him with Todd Bentley comparing their tattoos, which means that you should probably go and see what their tattoos are because they're filled with occultism too. And if you go and look at the other pictures of Derek Gates, all of his pictures that he's doing for his media press kits and whatnot are Freemason. All the hand signs. Divine Feminine, the combining of male and female, like all of them. All of them are Freemason. And he's supposed to be inside this group of new apostolic people. Anytime you see a square within a square, it's another symbolism for a Freemason logo. And they're calling themselves masters. God says, call no man master. That is, an, if you go and overlay that square within a square, you have the roof line for the alabaster prayer house. This is my best friend. Bill Johnson gave him the car that he died in. Let that sink in. Bill Johnson gave him the car that he died in. That car was a designed death trap, and I'm the witness. Human sacrifice by the occult. So that Bill Johnson could come and take back the church that his dad lost in 1982. And I can't get most of the family to wake up. Some of them are. Like I told my dad, I felt like I wasted the last three years of my life being here. And then he said, you have no idea how much you've learned. <laughs>